Good morning to all of you, those of you on Facebook, YouTube, that is uh, tuned in and it sounds like you're three minutes late. We're not, you three minutes early. Uh, <laughs> some technical problems. Uh, technical problems was getting me from the house to here uh, in time. But we're here and we're ready and we're ready to go. So welcome to all of you here today. And uh, this is, again, one of those uh, fresh out of the oven messages. Okay, it was even two minutes late out of the oven. So, let's pray together and let's get going. Father, we, we thank you for every privilege we have of being together, every privilege we have of sitting around your word. And today we think of all the your children in different parts of the world that don't have this privilege. They are forced to go undercover and we're still privileged to be able to, in public, come together. So we pray that today your word will speak to us and you will uh, come and open the word to us so that we can change. We've been praying this every week. Change our hearts, Lord. Bring us into line with your plan. That's our prayer this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As I begin, or just before I begin, our book is now two weeks out already. Surrender brings adventure. If you uh, have not received one, please get one. Uh, I think uh, it's one of the books that will... Uh, change your life. Um, that's why we wrote this book. This book is not because uh, it's written by, by me, but it's because it's really, we felt that this is a, the time for, for God to use this. If you are watching us uh, on uh, social media and you're not close to Frankfurt, if you're in Frankfurt, you're welcome to pop in at the office and come fetch one. Everything is free at Kairos, so you can just come fetch one. Uh, but uh, if you if you can't, please send us a message. Message us on Facebook or or on WhatsApp or wherever you can, and we will get a PDF copy to you, and then you can read the PDF copy if you would like to. All right, today we still. I thought we would be moving away already, but we're still on the subject of uh, where do we stand. In our relationship to Christ. Are we at the cross? And Joshua, you have to follow me. Are, are we at the cross? Or are we in idol worship? And this just represents the idols. Are we in idol worship? Or are we standing in the middle trying to serve God, not lose out on what the idols can give us? be in the middle and try and, and accept both of them. So we've been speaking about this for the past two weeks and today is the third message and who knows, it might be the last one <laughs> in this series. But I want us to read Joshua 24 from verse 31 and then go from there to Judges 2. So let's read the Joshua 24 verse 31. And Israel served the Lord all the days of Joshua and all the days of the elders that overlived Joshua and which had known all the works of the Lord that he had done for Israel. And then when we go to, to Judges, we read Judges 2 verse 10 and 11. And all that generation also were gathered to their fathers. And there arose another generation after them who did not know the Lord or the work that he had done for Israel. And the people of Israel did what was evil in the sight of the Lord and served the Baals. Let's just, let's just look at, 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 at these three different groups of people quickly and then we'll get into the, the rest of the message. The first group, they knew, they knew the law of the works. Okay. They knew the law of the works. In other words, they knew God. 
This was the group this side, and, and uh, it's illustrated in the word by Joshua. Listen to this. And Israel served the Lord all the days of Joshua. What did Joshua say in Joshua 24? As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Joshua chose to be on God's side. Joshua chose to have a relationship with God. Joshua chose to walk with God. Is that where we are? And I'm sure most of us have chosen that. So uh, I'm trusting that that's where we are, or that's where we at least have said, God, this is where I'm going to live. In this place of while Joshua was there, the people served the Lord because of Joshua, because he loved God and because he had a relationship with God. Then we see here in the middle, if we read a little bit further, we read that Israel served the Lord all the days of Joshua and all the days of the elders. Now we get the second group, the elders that overlived Joshua and which had known all the works of the Lord that he had done for Israel. So Joshua knew the Lord of the works. The elders knew the works of the Lord. Did you get that? Joshua knew the Lord of the works. But the elders knew the works of the Lord. They were here in the middle. They saw Joshua knew the Lord. They didn't know the Lord, but they knew the works of the Lord. And that's where many Christians are today. We don't know the Lord, but at least we know the works of the Lord. We know that God is real. We know that God is there. We know that, that the Bible says, and so if the Bible says it must be so, uh, but we don't know the Lord of the works. We only know the works of the Lord. We don't have a personal relationship with God. <coughs> And every Christian, we ask the question, do you have a personal relationship with God? Yes. What does it mean? It means I go to church and I read my Bible and I pray every day. No, no, no. You just know the works of the Lord. Going to church, reading your Bible and praying every day, you just know the works of the Lord. Walking with God. Having an intimate relationship with God. Hearing His voice. Being the spokesman for Him. Being obedient to Him, you know the Lord. But if you're just a normal Christian, <laughs> you know the works of the Lord. But you still need to have an encounter with the Lord. Okay. And then <clears throat> when we go to, Josh, uh, to, 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 to Judges, these people knew not the Lord. <coughs> And all that generation, this is the generation, the following generation, and all that generation also gathered to their fathers, and there arose another generation, a new generation, after them, who did not know the Lord or the work that He had done for Israel. And the people of Israel did what was evil in the sight of the Lord and served the Baals. So this group, they, they didn't grow up with Joshua. They didn't know Joshua. They didn't see how Joshua walked with God. They just knew the elders. They knew the works of Joshua. And now they come and they don't know the Lord at all. They don't even know who God is. They don't understand who God is. By this side. Bruce Wilkinson wrote a book and he did a series many years ago on the three chairs. Some of you will remember this, some of you won't remember this. But he speaks about, isn't it amazing that there's a generation or a group or a father and mother, parents, that have an encounter with God and they know God. And they raise up their children in the church. 
Now there might be some of you that are parents <clears throat> that fall into this group. You know God, you've experienced God, you've had an encounter with God, and you walk with God. But you raise up your children in the church, but you don't raise up your children in Christ. You raise up your children with the children's Bible, but you don't raise up your children with the Word of God. Did you know that the children's Bible, just by the way, this has got nothing to do with my message, but let me just put it in. Because in our, in our Bible school, <clears throat> we speak a lot about this. The children, children's Bible puts pictures in your mind that are not always true to what the Word says. You, you should go check it out sometime. Okay? I'll just give you a small example. Uh, the children's Bible shows the wise men coming to the stable where Jesus was born and bringing their gifts. But the Bible says that when the wise men came, they went into the house because Jesus and his family had already moved into a house by the time the wise men came. I'm just using s s simple examples to say don't raise your children on the children's Bible. Raise your children on the Word of God. Oh, but they don't understand. You'll be surprised when the Spirit of God opens up the Word of God to children. Because when the generation that God is raising up now is a generation that's moving from here we're moving right through to here because they're going to have an encounter with God and we're going to have children six, seven, eight years old that's going to prophesy, that's going to speak forth God's word, that's going to lay hands on the sick and they're going to be healed and it's going to be according to God's word, not according to the children's Bible. Yeah. Okay, but uh, I'm, I'm not, that's not my point. <laughs> I went off the point for a while. Uh, but, <laughs> And I never do that. I never do that. This is just a day. I never ever do that. <laughs> okay. But uh, Joshua knew God. The, this group, and, and, and we as fathers, parents, we should get our children from here. Stop pushing them to go to all the social things of the world. To, uh, to, to, to experience the world and start pushing them to come to Christ and start experiencing Him, the Him. Oh, but being a Christian is so boring. Read my book. You'll see how boring it is. You'd love to have a life like this. But it only comes here. It's the most adventurous life you will ever have. And if you can teach your children that to serve God is not just to be a nominal Christian and we go to church and we do these things and a little bit here and a little bit there and we, and, and, and we balance our, our lives out. But you teach your children that to be in Christ is the best place. And it's not just the best place because Papa says so. It's the best place because here you can have an encounter with God and everything will be exciting from the moment you have an encounter with God right to the day that you die. Doesn't take away problems. It just gives us a way to overcome the problems. It doesn't remove the mountains. It just gives us the way where we can speak forth. And Jesus said, if you speak to the mountain to be moved, it will be moved. So, so this message today is to get us to understand that the church today is happy to be here in the world. The cross and the idols. And we'll even use a little bit of our idols to draw people into the church. Okay? But I'm going ahead of myself. Alright. So, Bruce Wilkinson tells us that the parents are here. They serve God. The next generation comes 
They don't have an encounter with God and they serve God here. And sometimes they go to church and sometimes they don't. And sometimes they, it's more important. <laughs> I'm just being a little bit radical just to, to upset a few people that's watching me. But sometimes they, they live here where a Sunday is a day for the family to go to the city and go have an enjoyable time because our week is so full. You don't know how many people I've spoken to recently. <clears throat> That have said to me, you know, we want to come to church, but you know, Sunday's the only time that we can just rest as a family. Maybe you should come rest where the rest of the children are gone. But anyway, so, so, so this generation grows up here, but they have children. And their children, did you know that your children watch you more than you think they watch you? Your children listen to what you say more than you think they hear. Your children speak things that you speak and you moan and, 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 and you reprimand them for saying things, but it's actually the things that you've been saying. Your children start doing what you do. Your children, your, your, your sons, handle their sisters, the way you handle your wife. And I wish my children would get to that place where they start handling their sisters like I handle my wife. But they're getting there. You, you, you hear what I'm saying? So, when you live here, they watch you and when you pass away, or when you move on, or when they move out of the house, they say, ah, that's just something that my father and mother enjoyed doing, going to church. But there's no life in it. And so what do they do? They move here. Don't tell me sin is not enjoyable. Because if sin was not enjoyable, no one would do it. People love sin. It gives them a kick. And sometimes it kicks them right into hell, but it gives them a kick anyway. <clears throat> it's exciting. Sin is exciting. Doing things that I'm not allowed to do <coughs> is exciting. And so the children come this side and they do all the things that Mama and Papa said, don't do but Mama and Papa did it anyway. And so, 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 so our children grow up here, and our children grow up not even knowing. They don't know God, they don't know the Lord, they don't even know the works of the Lord. All they know is, church doesn't work. If church worked, my Mama and Papa wouldn't fight so much. If church worked, my mama and papa would be more happy every day. If church worked, and they'd have all these reasons if church worked. So the question that I'm asking you, and maybe not you sitting here, because I'm trusting you are here, but I'm, I'm asking the question because we've got to check ourselves and we've got, to, we've got to look at ourselves and decide where are we. And the question is not where were you last year? Not where were you two months ago? Where are you today? This weekend, someone asked me, how do you get to surrender? How do you get to a place of surrender in your life? And you know what? I had to answer you. You don't get there. It's a journey every day. It's a decision every day. It's not a decision two months ago, I'm going to surrender my life to Christ. It's this morning, getting up and saying, Lord, I surrender my life to Christ today. And getting up tomorrow morning and saying, Lord, I surrender my life to Christ today. Because we can live in our past testimonies. 
of living for Christ and not even notice that we are so moved this side, that we are so close to this side already and we still tell everybody about that experience. Surrender to Christ is a daily. That's why Jesus said, you cannot be my disciple if you do not pick up your cross and follow me daily. It's a daily walk with Christ to follow Him. Do you know the Lord of the works? Or do you only know the works of the Lord? And if you're here and you don't know the Lord at all, or His works, then you need to make a decision. And you need to choose life that God gives us. Okay, and then the group there, they just know the Lord, we said that. And then in, in verse 11, in verse 11 there, it says, And the people of Israel did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, and served the Baals. The people served the Baals. They enjoyed and moved into Baal worship. Now what was Baal? We spoke about it a few weeks ago, but I want to just take out one major point of Baal. Baal was the god of unbelief. He was the god of unbelief. Baal came and this was his, his agenda for the for the church, for the body of Christ, it was his agenda for the people of Israel. He came to destroy our confidence in God. And we sit in situations, and this is what Baal does, and I'm telling you today, if, if this is in your life at the moment, you're serving Baal. There's good news. You can move from Baal to Christ. Okay. But you're serving Baal if these, this is in your life. At every unnatural death, at every accident, at every tragedy, the enemy sends the spirit of Baal to sow the seed in our minds. Where's God? Where's God now? Why did he allow this? God is a cruel God. If you're there in your life, then I'm telling you today, if you believe it or not, you serve him, Baal. Now it's not okay to serve Baal, but it's okay to be there if you're willing to come to Christ. But if you're willing to stay there, you've got big problems. In Ukraine, we say, Archan problema. Very big problems. His first attack is a seed that he plants in our minds. The, plant is, the, the seed that he plants is, God does not hear my prayers. Where is God? I pray, I fast, but he does not answer me. Where's God? The next thing that he does is, it's the spirit the demonic spirit that removes our eyes from God and places it on our circumstances. He takes our eyes and he says, focus, 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 see how terrible it's going with you. And when you place your eyes on the circumstances, what happens? You serve Baal. <laughs> and then he comes and he sees uh, he, 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 he let us focus so that we can see our need and our lack and then when we see our need and our lack we just say God doesn't work let's just move over to Baal it's much better the people of Israel I said it last week they, they went to sacrifice at the temple and after they sacrificed at the temple they left the temple and they went to Baal and they went to sacrifice, to, they went to sacrifice, bring a sacrifice to Baal. 
They wanted to keep both gods happy. But this is the true living God. This is just the demonic forces. So do you want to keep demonic forces happy or God happy? You can't choose. You can't choose to keep both of them happy. You have to choose life. Otherwise you will get them. Okay. If he can get us to lose our trust in God, then he builds the altar of Baal in our lives. And the demons laugh. And they enjoy Christians going through difficult circumstances. And there's something inside of us uh, that, that, that where, where, where the demonic forces start to, 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 to mock God in our own lives. When he succeeds to erect this altar, you will begin to doubt everything about God and start believing that God is not alive and does not exist. Have you wondered how people, I, 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 I've had friends that had an encounter with God, and if I'm telling you they had an encounter with God, they had an amazing encounter with God. Some of them even served from the pulpit here in Kainos, serving us many, many, many years ago. They had an encounter with God. And today, they are serving Baal fully. Then you say, how can that happen? How, how can you have an encounter with God? How can you experience God? How, how can you preach God? How can you pray for the sick and they get healed? How can you have this fullness of, of God? And the Spirit of God flow through you, and then you end up serving Bob. How does that happen? It happens when the enemy comes and he helps us and he shows us and he takes our eyes and our focus onto all the bad things that's happening to us. And then suddenly, from a place where we've encountered God and we, where we've preached and said, I know that God is real. He takes us from that place to a place where we say, I doubt that God even exists. It doesn't make sense. But demonic forces don't make sense. And if we open our, our hearts and our lives through unbelief to Him, I can tell you today, He's going to draw us away from here and He's going to pull us over to here and we're going to serve Paul because it's so much just easier and comfortable. But it's not really. It's just his lies. Because Satan is a liar. But he turns his lies to look like truths. But it's still a lie. Okay. People don't pray anymore because they believe that God does not hear or answer their prayers so they just stop praying. I've got there on the board, unbelief is an altar of Baal. Unbelief is the greatest form of idolatry. The greatest form of idolatry is when you choose to stop believing that God is God. And that's what He does to us. That's, that's where He takes us. And fear and unbelief lets us place our faith in Baal. Let me give you an example out of the Bible. Gideon. Gideon served Baal. That's the next one. There we go. Gideon served Baal. Let me show you that Gideon served Baal. In Judges 6 from verse 12, 12 and 13. And the angel of the Lord appeared to, to Gideon and said to him, The Lord is with you, O mighty man of valor, O mighty warrior. God is with you. And that warrior wasn't the one where you worry, worry, worry. Uh, that, that, that warrior was <laughs> fighter, great man of God, man of valor. He said, oh, great man of valor. The angel said, a mighty man of valor. And Gideon said to him, you don't understand my own words. I serve Bob. And I'll prove to you I serve Bob. Because listen to what he says. And Gideon said to him, Please, my Lord, if the Lord is with us, 
Why then has all this happened to us? Why? 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 Isn't that a question that we ask many times? Why? When someone dies close to us, why did God take him? When someone's in an accident that we know, why? When someone dies, died from COVID, why? When someone gets sick, why? And we have all these questions of why, why, why? It's ball, ball service. Worshipping ball. Why? Why has all this happened to us? And where are all these wonderful deeds that our fathers recounted to us, saying, did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? So where's all God's, you, you say God lives, but where, where, where? Show us, show us God, where, where, where's God working? Why, where? And then we end off by saying, but now the Lord has forsaken us. Look where we are now. God is not here now. Where's God now? Why did God do this? Where's God? And now we're sitting in this predicament. And you telling me that I must serve God. You telling me that I must raise up an army to go serve God. You telling me that I'm a mighty man of God. Why? When? But look now. In the book, you probably, those of you that read this book, will, will remember reading about a story with our daughter, Michaela, when she died. I don't even know if I put that part in the book, maybe I did, I can't remember what I wrote. But when she died, we, Madalena and myself, we went up to Rhodes Memorial and we just went to go sit there. After we said to God, God, your, we, we surrender to your will, to your plan, whatever you want to do, we surrender. And we were sitting there in Rhodes Memorial in Cape Town and, and, and sitting together and crying tears and saying our daughter is dead but while we were sitting there we said to God again God we know you are God I remember it so, so clearly we were sitting on a, on a, on a, a step there and, and, and uh, we were just sitting and the next moment we felt like a bubble come over us and a bubble enveloped us that twice in my life that I really felt God's presence tangible. I know God's always with me and I know God's in me and I know all these and I've experienced God. But twice in my life and that was the second time in my life that we felt God's tangible presence around us and he enfolded us with a bubble. And God said to us, because you have trusted me. And because you have surrendered to me, I will not take you through the normal process of, of uh, uh, what's, what's, grieving. grieving. Okay, thank you. When three people say at the same time, it sounds like different words. Okay, grieving. I will not take you through this process of grieving. God says, I'm going to pick you up and take you and put you down on the other side. And I... Till up until today, we have never asked God the question, why? We have never asked God the question, where were you? We have never asked the question, look at where we are sitting now, Lord. It's not because we're great. It's not because, it's because we chose to stay in this place, even when we went through difficult times. We chose not to choose Baal's uh, uh, lies that he wanted to bring across our way. We, we chose not to believe what Baal was saying to us. We chose to believe God. And as we believed God, God said, I will take you and pick you up. As he enfolded us in this bubble, it, it was like a, a tangible bubble. And I can't explain it. If you, if you weren't there, you wouldn't know. So, but, but, but it was this tangible bubble that, that, that we felt that enfolded us full of God's peace. Full of his grace, full of his love. We just felt our God was just enfolding us with his arms in this bubble. And he said to us, I will pick you up and I will, won't take you through the normal process of grieving. I will take you up and I will put you on the other side. What is the normal process of grieving? Why did God do this? 
Why, why me? Why did you take my family? Why, why am I struggling? Why? That's normal. But God said we don't have to be normal. We don't have to go through the normal. If we trust Him and do not listen to the lies of Baal, He will take us and He will put us on that side. Gideon served Baal and he had all these questions. And I want to say to you, if God could call Gideon, he can call you. If, could, if God could call someone that was standing this side already and saying, I'm here and I'm, and I'm serving this, this Baal, and God says, I want to call you to move from here to here. If God can do that for Gideon, He can do it for you. If you are today in a place where you are standing here and you've got all these questions and you and, 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 and you and you, you your your mind just does not want to give you answers, then God says, "I'm calling you, mighty warrior. I'm calling you, mighty man or mighty woman of valor." I'm calling you and I'm saying to you, I don't care how many questions you have, if you are willing to listen to me, if you are willing to follow me, if you are willing to choose to, uh, to, to trust me, I will take you and I will put you here and you will have a new adventure in your life. Gideon's life was never the same after that. That was the beginning of his adventure. That was the beginning of his walk with God. Gideon, after that, God said, there's something you must first do. There's something you must first do before you can follow me. There's something that you must do to get from there to there. God said, listen to this. That night the Lord said to him, take your father's bull and the second bull, seven years old, and pull down the altar of Baal that your father has, and cut down the Asherah that is beside it, and build an altar to the Lord your God on top of the stronghold there, with stones laid in due order. Then take the second bull and offer it as a burnt sacrifice for the wood, uh, with the wood of the Asherah that you cut down. So Gideon took ten men of his servants and did as the Lord had told him. But because he was too afraid of his family and the men of the town to do it by day, he did it by night. God doesn't care. If you're a little bit afraid. God doesn't care if you're scared. God cares if you're going to obey Him or not. God doesn't care if you do it in the day. He doesn't care if you do it in the night. He doesn't care if you do it when everybody sees you. He doesn't care if you do it when you're alone. He just says, do it. And so Gideon went. And he broke down the altar. He broke down the idol. He said, you will never ever rule my life again. I am finished with Baal worship. I am finished with not trusting God. I am finished. My my children will see I kicked you down. My children will see I will not even reach out to you. My children will see I will not stand in the middle. I will not stand there by you. I will stand under the cross and I will serve God with my whole life. God is calling the church to become the church. And I've said that this past few weeks, every, every time, the church is not an institution. The church is not a, a place, a building. The church is me. The church is you. We are the church. And God is calling the church to say, take a stand. Kick down Baal in your life. Get rid of the whys, the wheres, and the and nows. Get rid of these things that you're asking these questions and you don't trust me anymore. Get rid of them and come and stand by the cross and say, I, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. It's so simple. 
But you don't understand. We're living in the world. Jesus understood that. He said, you are in the world, but you're not of the world. So make a choice. Do you want to be in the world and of the world, or do you just want to be in the world, but not of the world? Make your choice. But when you choose, choose life. That's where God is taking us. That's where God wants us. I, I, I know this message sounds like it's the same message week after week. I will preach it for a year long if, 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 you don't, if no one hears it until someone hears it and starts living that I will not stand for Baal. I will not stand in the middle between Baal and God, but I will stand for Christ. And I will lay down my life for Christ so that He can live through me. You might think today, I don't have idolatry in my life. I don't have idols. Let me just, just re-emphasize again. Baal might not look like an, like an idol, but unbelief is the idol of Baal. And if he can get you to doubt God, he gets you to serve Baal. If Satan can get you to think, where is God? Why is God? Where? Why? Why? Where? And now, look at us. If he can get you to that place, then you start serving Baal. Yesterday, you were still serving Christ. And without even noticing, you end up serving Baal. And I don't care if you get bored with the same message every Sunday. At least there's one person that's not bored, that's me. I enjoy this message every time I preach it because every time God challenges me and He says to me, are you just speaking words to people or are you living what you're preaching? Every day God says to me, will you surrender to the cross? Will you surrender to Christ? Every day God challenges me. And some days I feel like I'm moving from year to year. And then God comes and He says, Hey, I'm in relationship with you. And I will pull you to this position. I will take you and I will keep you. At the cross if you're just willing to surrender let me close the rest I will speak in the next service let me just say and I'll just give you the points there is always opposition in obedience there is always when Gideon went to pull down the idols and the altar of Baal. The people came and they said, where is Gideon? We want to kill him. Look what he's done to our God. There's always opposition. But Gideon had a father that was serving Baal. But when he saw what his son did, he suddenly realized Baal has no strength. Baal has no power. Baal has no influence. And he looked at the man and he said to the man, well, is, is Baal a wimp? Can't Baal stand up for himself and fight for himself? Do you want to fight for Baal? Let Baal fight for himself. There will always be opposition when you take a stand to move from there or from year to year. There will always be opposition. But in the opposition, there will always, God will always raise up people to be with you. And my last point that we will spend some more time on in the next session in the African service. Obedience invites God's spirit in. Just listen to this. I'm just going to read the scripture and then we'll end. Now all the Midianites and the Amalekites and the people of the East came together. This is the enemy coming against Israel, they came together and they crossed the Jordan 
and encamped in the valley of Jezreel. They were there ready to say, now we're here in your land. And the devil comes and he says to us as a church, I'm in, in your land, I'm close to you, I'm ready to, to wipe you out. And, and, and the devil uses whoever he wants to. He uses political parties, he uses churches, he uses governments, he uses whoever he wants to to come up against us. But we listen to verse 34. But, the enemy comes up against us. But, but the Spirit of the Lord clothed Gideon. In Afrikaans it says, uh, but the Spirit of the Lord, I'm just translating it freely, but the Spirit of the Lord filled Gideon. Can you imagine? And I think that word in the Greek, I didn't check it up. Uh, oh, in the Hebrew, didn't check it up, so I'm just guessing now. But I think that word says to fold, to clothe, to cover, to... Uh, that's why the different translations use different words. The one says to fold, the other one says to clothe. Wouldn't you like to be clothed with the Holy Spirit? But the Spirit of God clothed Gideon. And he sounded the trumpet and he called the Abyssalites to come and follow him. Let's go. We're going to take them. There will be opposition. But if you're obedient to God, <laughs> the Spirit of God will clothe you, will fill you, will be inside of you, around you, upside, above you, under you, all over. He will be there to protect you and to take you to the next level that He has chosen for us. Revival is coming. Revival is coming, but when revival comes, God is asking us the question, is the church ready for revival? My job at this, at, at this time in history is to preach and to teach and to help the church get ready so that when revival comes, we are ready to receive the revival to move with the revival and to be available to bring in the lost, the harvest that will come. Where are you today? Are you standing here? And I'm trusting and I'm hoping and when I look at most of you, I think most of you have made the choice to say, this is where I'm standing. Some of you Hopefully not sitting here today, but some of you, and if you're sitting here today, that's okay because you can make the choice. Are standing here and saying, I'm listening to all the whys and the where's and the nows. But now I'm ready to pull down the idols. I'm ready to pull down all, all the demonic forces that is coming against me and I'm ready to move and if anybody is here or is listening to me and you know you are stuck there where you're asking God all the questions and you have all this unbelief inside of you today's the day that you can come and say God I lay it down at the cross because I choose to follow you let's pray together Father as we come to you today I know maybe people see me or hear me as being passionate or maybe too passionate but I can never be radical and passionate enough to get this message across to say Lord we need to choose your church needs to rise up your church needs to choose your church needs to walk in the truth. Your church needs to live in the truth. And we as your church, each one of us as individuals that have made you part of our lives, not even part of our lives, that have surrendered our lives to you and said, Lord, come and take over my life. We as your children come today to say, here I am, Lord. I come today anew and I say today again, Lord, 
here am I. I surrender to you. I lay down everything to follow you. Help me not to, to, to move from the cross towards the idols. Teach me to live. And, and your Holy Spirit, that when we pull down these, 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 these altars of, of demonic forces, your Holy Spirit comes and clothes us and fills us. Let your Holy Spirit take us and draw us more and more closer to the cross. May we come to the place where it, not just leaning, uh, kneeling before the cross to receive redemption, but coming to lay our lives down and to say, I have been crucified. And it's no longer I that live, but Christ that liveth in me. Lord, won't you come? And yea, in our church, yea, in Kainos, yea, in this, in, 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 in our gatherings, yea, where we come together as the body of Christ. Won't you take the, this body, this part of the body, and won't you revive us? Won't you come through your Holy Spirit and come and remove every part of idol worship, every part of worship of unbelief, every part of worship of, with no faith, every part of that, that which belongs to the idols, won't you come today and just come cleanse us? And as you're sitting here today, I want to challenge you. If you are sitting here today and you know you're not standing at the cross, you know you're not walking, carrying the cross, you know that you haven't surrendered and laid down your life to Christ. Maybe you did that a while back. Maybe you need to do it again. And God wants to challenge you today. And he wants to say to you today, I don't care about your past. I don't care about your past idol worship. I don't care about where you were. I'm coming to you today and I'm saying to you today, Oh mighty man of valor. Oh mighty woman of valor. Oh mighty warrior. I've come to call you to be obedient to me. I've come to call you to follow me. I've come to call you to take up your cross daily. And to follow me. Maybe you in a place of doubt. Don't you want to just come today and just lay that doubt down? And say, Lord, I lay my doubt. I lay my unbelief down at the cross. Please remove it from my heart. And please draw me into the place where I can serve you fully. And as we stand, Lord at this place. Every day you bring us to a place of making choices. And you say to us today, I set before you life, and I set before you death. I set before you blessing, and I set before you curse. And you say to us again, like you've, you've said every week for the past weeks, my child, choose life. We want to choose life today. And those of you that want to choose life today, just open up your hearts to God. And as we enter into a time of worship now, just lay down your life and say, Lord, I surrender my life to you. And I'm available to walk with you completely. That's our prayer. Lord. That's our prayer today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As we worship the Lord, let's just surrender ourselves to Him today.